Okay, we're first. Are you ready? <laughs> I think we're yes. live. We're live. Hello. Yeah, we're never Hello, sure. everyone. <laughs> maybe we're live, maybe we're just talking alone. Yes. Talking to the camera. Yeah. Hello. It's great to be here with you. We're yes. First. Anyway, even yes. if we are yes. alone. Um, just the two of us. And we're going to be talking about creating like never before. Yeah, it's true. And someone is already chatting, so which okay. means that we are not alone. So we're not alone. Hi, so yes, hi guys. Hello, hello, hello everyone. Dax in Paris and Clem and Bombay and Amal. Hello everyone. Okay. So yeah. So today we're going to be talking about mobile workflows, yes. and these are things that allow us to really create on the go, to create things as they come into our minds. And uh, what you know, what's really changed in in recent years is the ability to to uh, to use our cellular phones, our tablets, to actually do creative work. And yeah. recently, Adobe has made uh, leaps forward in, in these new workflows. And this is something we're going to be talking about in the next hour or so, showing you a little bit of our, uh, of, of our vision, of our apps that, we've, that we have prepared. We have some capture apps that let you capture ideas, that let you capture, uh, that create brushes and capture colors to then use inside of your creative workflow. And then also, of course, um, creation apps uh, on the iPad or on, the, uh, on, on mobile devices. And that's both for Android and, uh, and uh, iOS devices. We'll make the decision. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll make we'll make the distinction. That's the word I was looking for uh, about the apps, and uh, you will also see uh, in the uh, in the video here on the on the side, no, on this side here, on this side. It's, yes, no, yep, on this side, <laughs> no, on the other side. There's there's all the little icons that uh, that actually tell you what apps we're going to be using today, and of course everything then ends up in our. Um, uh, it, well, it can stay mobile, it can stay on our mobile devices, we can publish it from there. But what's super interesting is that uh, thanks to what we call Creative Sync and um, uh, Creative Cloud Libraries, all of the work we do on our mobile devices in the outside world can actually come back to our desktop computers and be used in Photoshop, Illustrator or InDesign to, uh, to finesse the work and to, to make it available for uh, for professional printing or or any type of um, of, of publishing, so so maybe we can explain how this uh, live stream works. Mm -hmm. um, so this is live from Paris. Uh, I am Michael, and this is Rufus. We both work in the Creative Cloud team, and uh, we'll be um, um, monitoring the chat. Okay. Yes. So uh, don't hesitate uh, if you have. A, an echo, someone is complaining about echo sound. Maybe you have two windows opened. Yes, that, that's a classic. That could be. It's a classic, that's, yes. Yeah, it's a classic. So just make sure you don't have two windows yeah, open. Yeah, there is, there is no echo in the room. Uh, can... In this room? No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we can show, for instance, how it works. So if you click yep. here. So, no, oh yes, okay. So, so what no. is the minimum Android version you should have to be able to work with these apps? Yeah. Bombay asks. And uh, this is something that I've just, that's just a comment that I've, um, uh, introduced into the chat pod that everybody sees, right? Yeah. So don't hesitate to ask questions and we will make sure to, to take some uh, breaks to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. uh, but first we wanted to start with uh, a movie um, where we followed uh, David Mascha in uh, Germany, in Berlin. And he's actually using all these new innovative and modern workflows, you know, starting on mobile devices and ending directly. I think he works in Photoshop. Uh, so let's start with this movie and then uh, after that, afterwards, we'll show you how to use all these uh, magical tools. All right, um, let's so do it. Let me switch to this and launch the movie here. Here we go. When I first got to the brewery, I was excited. It's full of light, of texture, of ideas, inspiration. I like the bit of adrenaline rush. I only get nervous if there are like if the police is coming or something, then I get nervous. <laughs> 
these new creative cloud tools give artists like me a chance to show the world through our eyes. Everything I find shows up in my library. It's full of possibilities. It's not clean, it's not sterile, it's, it's alive. Okay, so yeah, that's the work of uh, David Masha. And that's a pretty Quite good impressive. example, yes. Yeah. Of of how he can take inspiration from the outside world and bring it on his mobile device and, and create things with that. And uh, one thing that I find fascinating is with these new creation tools is that it actually creates also new styles of graphic design. Um, we really see that the adoption of these new tools that you, know, that you have in your pocket can actually uh, define a style. And uh, we'll be talking about uh, style later on in the, in, in the show today um, uh, when we talk about the work of Brian Yap, for example, yeah. which I think is fascinating to see how um, how an application such as Adobe Ideas, how it was called in the past, which is now called Adobe Illustrator Draw, actually influenced a whole new generation of, uh, of illustrators. So we'll be looking at that. So why don't we start looking at some of these capture apps yeah. and, uh, and explain sure. our audience exactly how those work. So the capture apps, uh, the good news is that we are talking about three apps today uh, that are both available for free. Uh, on Android and iOS. So if you ha have an Android, Android smartphone, you just go on the Google Play Market and on iOS on the App Store. And um, maybe a good thing, a good trick would be just to type Adobe and you will have the list of all the apps available. So we will show you three uh, of those. So let me switch here. And uh, now you should be able to see uh, the screen of my phone. There we go. Uh, so this is my iPhone. And uh, the goal of the capture apps, apps is to capture elements in your environment, leveraging the camera of the device. So that's super easy. So should we start with Adobe Color maybe, which is, uh, I think, the most famous one? Yes, Adobe Color. Adobe Color. Um, so Adobe Color, uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to, to use. You would just say, I want to create a theme, a color theme from the camera and it will analyze so you can see uh, the setup of the studio in real time what is around you and uh, find let's say the the five colors that will define the color theme of your environment so if i uh, focus on uh, this orange now it will capture as you can see oh maybe we can take this one actually it's not that bad yeah nice orange. hues of orange so also i can tap once once you tap, it will freeze the image, okay? And then using your finger, you can say, okay, I also want to pick some gray here or here. Um, <clears throat> and then you can uh, start editing all the pictures that you would do with, uh, with the wheel of colors. You have a lot of settings, okay? And directly play with the, uh, um, here you have the hexadecimal, that's the name mm -hmm. in uh, English, yeah. Yes. A reference that you can use on your website anywhere. Um, but let's say that. But one thing that's interesting yeah. that people ask me all the time oh, yeah. why is why uh, five? What? Why only five colors? No, 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 no. no. Ah, okay. Go, go that's back. Go one. back to the view. Oh yeah, sure. That, that we had Let before. Me freeze. Yes. Sure. And then we Wheel can actually view the colors in various different types, like even CMYK. If you go, if you press on, wait, where was this? Uh, maybe. Wait. Okay. Ah, okay. So maybe yes. Oh, here maybe it's on, too on the color wheel maybe Let me it's see. to go back to the color oh, okay, wheel. okay um, but this is something you can do with the web version because yes. there's also a website of Adobe color that you can use and once you see the tools also it's in RGB and CMYK yeah. and it's uh, you can uh, you can access the colors in a whole bunch of variants you also have some uh, color algorithm that you can choose so uh, try out complementary colors if you want to uh, define your own color theme so okay let's Let's pick this one and I will save this theme. So you just have to name it and I will call it uh, my orange and I will save it. Uh, first, you see there is an option to publish this theme on color.adobe.com. It's because there is a social layer, uh, let's say uh, aspect to Adobe Color. You can share it with all the creatives all around mm -hmm. the world, 
world. And if you visit color.adobe.com, uh, you will be able to browse I don't know, thousands of themes. You will be able to vote for your favorite theme. Um, so if you want to get the mood of Berlin, you can type Berlin mm -hmm. and you will take actually colors that have been captured in Berlin. Or if you save this as orange, my yeah. orange, save. I, can I can search for colors that have this name. Yeah. And, uh, and you will find the And theme. I will find them. So I will just save. And you see at the top, uh, it says Masterclass. So Masterclass is one of my Creative Cloud library. Okay. Uh, so I have a lot of libraries. So let's pick this one, for instance, my library, which was my first one when I uh, as, as a Creative Cloud member. Um, and this is where I saved already several themes. And if I go back to Masterclass here, I have my theme. Um, once it's saved in the Creative Cloud library, it should be automatically synced uh, to, with, the, with all my apps and not only on mobile devices, like if I open Photoshop now, I will be able to find these colors or if I open Illustrator, but we will do it later, mm -hmm. later on so you will see how it works. And this is using a technology named uh, Creative Sync, uh, which is really at the heart of Creative Cloud to sync colors, but not, not only colors, you will see like shapes, uh, graphic assets, font styles, fonts among all your devices and all your apps. So that's the first one, Adobe Color, very popular. Um, and usually, yeah, someone uh, always asks me why only five colors. Yes. And why? Uh, why? <laughs> because it's true. Like we could capture maybe ten, twelve, um, <clears throat> but we we estimate, and this is uh, something very common in the creative community, that five colors should be more than enough to start working on a theme, uh, on um, the design of a, a print page, or even in web design. Usually, you you try to. I mean, you understand the mood of the pages with five colors. Uh, with uh, 10, it, it can be, maybe it will, uh, there will be too much distraction. So that's the first one, Adobe Color. I really like this one. Mm -hmm. Then um, <clears throat> there is Adobe Shape that you can show. Yes, Adobe Shape. Uh, basically, Adobe Shape lets you um, capture shapes from the world around you. So for example, if I want to, uh, yes, okay, Michael is now, um, taking um, you know shapes from from the studio where we're sitting in, and uh, and for example, let's have a let's, this yeah. is a sketch that um, uh, that, that, that Michael did. So not this one. It's my uh, Neron. Ne ah, Neron. Neron. Yeah, Neron. Okay. Very famous artist. Okay. Actually. We need to give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Yeah, okay. So very nice lettering there, and by using the um, um, this capture app called Adobe Shape, uh, Michael will now be able to very very uh, precisely copy that that graphic and by moving the slider left and right you can actually define exactly what it is from the drawing that you want to to convert and the interesting thing here is that um, the image that you're creating will be a vector image that can then be used in other applications on on your mobile devices mm -hmm. or that can also be used in uh, uh, in applications such as Adobe Illustrator or import it as a uh, vector art in InDesign or Photoshop. So very, very nice. And then once you have taken the image and um, you have the, um, um, the preview in your, on your screen, basically, and, yeah, so basically you can then also green, decide what, yeah. yeah, green means it is what you captured. Keep. Yes. Yeah. So I will, yeah, just use my finger, mm -hmm. see. With your, yeah, and everything and that, that Michael is now turning into white, I can will, zoom in. Will actually be removed from the drawing. Yeah. Okay, it looks good. Okay, there's some people like complaining about a black screen. Is everybody seeing our our screen right now? Yeah, they just have to refresh. Yeah. If they just if, have audio, they may have yeah, a, like a refresh issue. Yeah. Or so or can you just uh, tell us in the chat if, if you're all seeing it? Okay, very good. So <coughs> if you have an issue with the uh, with the video stream, just try to refresh yeah. the page and, and it's that maybe actually... also your internet connection. Sorry. Maybe a slow that's, internet connection. That's well, the thing well, with live stream. Okay. But the good news is that uh, this will be available for replay on this page yes. and also on YouTube. So on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel, the official Adobe mm -hmm. Creative Cloud YouTube channel, uh, it will be available also, uh, I guess, next week. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if you have a poor internet connection, it will work because with YouTube, we have uh, multiple... Uh, and we, you all see us. Thank you. 
Thank so you there's all. there's Stealth who's asking, is this an elementary class or a master class? Well, this is actually a class where we go into into quite some depth of the mobile apps and yep. show everybody how all of these mobile apps work together in a creative workflow that can be used by everybody. So I wouldn't so, call it too elementary. Um, and uh, then we'll go to Photoshop. Yeah, yes, you will see the results. <laughs> we will we will we will now continue with so. this. Okay. Graphic. So now Adobe Shep is drawing what it uh, it calls it like smooth curves. Uh, mm -hmm. but basically, these are vectors. So you can zoom in and see that it has produced vectors from the drawing. And I will call it my Paris. And the cool thing is that if you zoom in, you can really see that it's vectors. It's oh, yeah, yeah. this is not pixels. Okay. So this is way different from just taking a picture and uh, and scanning it in and using it in yep. Photoshop or and again or I just save it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the benefit is that cool. uh, Michael saved that inside of a Creative Cloud library called Masterclass. And this Creative Cloud library is now available right now in Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, and all of the other uh, mobile apps to be reused. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. it's Michael's not only hand. for lettering. You can also use like for anything that is around you, basically, because you can play with the threshold and say, okay, I don't need this. And okay. And it will draw vectors. So this one will be hard <laughs> because there are hmm. hundreds of vectors. So hopefully it will work. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. My hand is not that hairy. Okay. I don't know why there yeah. are so many vectors, but right. And of course, the more vectors there are, the the um, uh, the more the more it takes to actually um, 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 trace this image. Okay, and again, this image is now Same. inside of the Creative Cloud library. Okay, so maybe we will capture one more element and we can show everything yes. in Photoshop, okay. so they will understand how Perfect. it works. So let's capture a brush now. A brush. So we captured colors. Now shapes, shapes that are vector shapes, mm -hmm. yeah. and now brush. Okay, so and brushes are of course things that you can uh, that can use in Photoshop. You can use also in an application that we'll show you in a second called Adobe Photoshop Sketch, uh, a mobile app. Um, and these brushes really behave like brushes uh, with a, a beginning and an end, and it actually follows whatever sign you make with your with your brush. So it's super interesting. I think Michael is now yeah. um, uh, doing. Like, oh, you're creating a brush from the yeah. tangerine, huh? Be beware of oh, yes, eyes. your eyes. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I'm blind. Okay. All right. That looks very cool. That's a cool brush. Okay. So let's go like here. Uh, so again, we will use Adobe Brush. Again, available on Android and iOS. And we will capture this. Okay. Uh, so basically, it will use the camera. And you just tap once to define an alpha mask. So you say, I don't need the white, okay? And you have a threshold here. So this will become my brush. Okay, let's take a picture. Then I can crop, I can resize. There we go. And now this, this is a brush and there are three main different styles. The first one is that I can reuse this brush in Photoshop Sketch, which is a drawing sketching app on iPad that we, we will show you how it works in a few minutes, but you can also create like a classic Photoshop brush or even better, a classic Illustrator brush. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but this time, so let's play with, uh, yeah, this one, this one looks cool. <laughs> and, uh, and you can directly try it. So that's what I like. Like you can draw and see how it behaves and you, you really keep the texture of the orange. So that's, that's very nice. And you can still um, decide to edit the brush. Okay, so it's not the final one. So you can come back and say, I want to try a different style. I want to crop it again. I want to define what is the tail and what is the head and then resize it like this and see how it behaves now. Uh, you can refine the image if you want to uh, zoom in and, uh, and uh, say, okay, I want to remove some parts. So you can zoom in and draw. You see to correct the brush a little bit yeah so stefan correct. is asking why do i need an app to create a brush i have an image on my hard drive that i want to make into a brush and i i do that in photoshop absolutely yeah. right i mean i would do that too if i have if i have to use it in photoshop and i have the image already that's probably how i would do it 
But the scenario here is that I'm on the go. I'm maybe on a train, I'm uh, around, I'm walking in nature, and I see inspiring shapes and, uh, and, um, and patterns that I want to use right away. And the benefit of creating the brush on your mobile device is actually that you can use it right away, also in some of our mobile apps as a brush. Not yeah. necessarily in Photoshop. You can also use it in Photoshop if you want, but I think the main benefit is really that you can use it right away inside of Brush, you can use it inside of inside of uh, Photoshop Sketch, uh, etc. So we'll, we'll see that in a second. Anytime, anywhere, just works. You know? Yeah. So it's already saved, you know, Adobe Brush, so I can rename it. And uh, I have other brushes. So th this one, as you can see, are made, uh, such as this one, is made for a Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So that's how it can repeat a pattern, you know, just capturing and drawing and then it will repeat everything. Um, so maybe now we can launch Photoshop and see what happens. So Rob is asking as well, like, um, uh, is there an online desktop version of Adobe Shape? Unfortunately, it's not compatible with my version of and the Android version that uh -huh. he has. Well, uh, we can't we can't develop software for uh, older versions of, of uh, operating systems, of course. Uh, so you will have to check the uh, the minimum system requirements that our apps uh, need to actually work. So um, uh, of course um, we can't support all of the older um, uh, all, all the older versions. So we've started very um, uh, heavily uh, investing on porting our apps to Android devices mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think um, um, uh, from now on we're going to be working on the coming releases of, of Android and not concentrating on the uh, on on older ones. Let's say it like that. Um, yeah, because there is uh, some uh, heavy processing, as you can guess. We're dealing with images and cameras, so we need some power on the device. Mm -hmm. Sorry for that. Yeah. Um, so here I am in Photoshop, and I can choose my masterclass library, so Creative Cloud library. And then we have all the assets that uh, we capture just uh, a few mm -hmm. seconds. Yes. Uh, so I have my uh, color theme. So I could, uh, for instance, uh, just select a color. I can say and say, okay, let's mm -hmm. try with this one, this one. And that's the color that we've just captured. Yep. So imagine uh, walking around, you see really cool colors on uh, um, in, in nature or in, in the urban uh, urban space around you, and you just go clack and take that color, and you can bring it right into your workflow without even having to uh, to think it like a little color sketchbook or notebook. And here I've captured, uh, so I've selected the brush. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it becomes a brush directly in your UI. You don't have, just have to click it once mm -hmm. and then start drawing something like this. And the reason why your tangerine brush is grayed out is because uh, you saved it as an Illustrator brush, right? In, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, the other one, Adobe the orange brush, brush? Yes. yeah, it was for Photoshop Sketch. So for Photoshop Sketch. We will okay. use it later. Perfect. Yeah. And then I have some graphics. So uh, you remember the Paris that we had. So this is vector graphics. So I can really, really scale it up. I don't mind because these are vectors. Okay, here we go. And same for my hand. I could place something like this. And uh, these are vectors. So in Photoshop, I can change the color. So that, that's great. So that's very um, neat workflow. Just using the capture apps, uh, you can start just mixing elements uh, and playing Photoshop. What you can also do is um, access all the libraries from Illustrator. Actually, the Creative Color libraries today are accessible from Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign CC, Premiere CC, and After Effects CC. Um, so let me show you why it's interesting here in Illustrator. So there's, a, there's an interesting question about resolution. They're probably talking about the brushes. Um, um, mm. So of course, the re resolution is the one of the, of the pixel image that you create, yeah. or it's also the, um, uh, if, if, you use, uh, if you use it for, for Illustrator, it, it, it works somehow differently, right? Uh, yeah, for Illustrator, it's mm. completely different. It's not a bitmap brush. Okay. So it's just, uh, it will actually, it will use, uh, I guess, shape in the background mm. to just uh, define the shape and uh, create something that is vector-based. Uh, in Photoshop, of course, it's a bitmap brush. But now in Illustrator, as you can see, so using Adobe Shape on my device, I keep all the information, which means that I can use tools 
such as uh, the warp tool to continue working on my shape. Okay, uh, and that that's that's a super benefit being able to start something on your mobile device and then continue in Illustrator and re finessing it. And Sibyl is asking, uh, she doesn't understand how the phone library ends up in your in your Photoshop library. Well, this is thanks to something that we we call Creative Sync. Basically, it synchronizes back to your Creative Cloud, and from the Creative Cloud, it syncs back to your um, uh, to your desktop computer. And uh, and all you need for that to work is an Adobe ID. And uh, I always repeat myself when I say that there is a one month uh, trial period for all of the desktop apps. All of the mobile apps are free. You can download them whenever you need. But when you want to get into the workflow, you need the Adobe ID and uh, and actually have the libraries sync. So yeah. that's for you, Sybil. So that's how the capture apps works. Mm -hmm. um, and again, yeah, the main workflow is really that, like you capture shapes, color, brushes, and then you, you go back to the office, you open your desktop computers, and you have everything here, thanks yeah. to Creative Things and the Creative Cloud libraries. But also, you can decide to capture elements and then start uh, your creative process on the iPad, for instance, sketching stuff. Um, so we, we will now uh, show you uh, how behave uh, the drawing apps. Uh, maybe first we want to show uh, the Brian Yap video. Yes, why not? Let's, let's show. Let's show. Let's start with, with Brian Yap, with uh, who is a, a creative, um, um, uh, an illustrator that actually uh, works at Adobe right now and is helping us with the development of the of the mobile app. So it's great to have a creative person such as Brian in our teams and uh, to to make the, the the mobile apps even better every day. So let's watch Brian Yap. All right, so that was Brian Yap uh, using these um, these illustration tools to actually create artwork. And when I uh, when I think of Brian, um, I've met him several times, and uh, when he draws, he actually pushes these applications to the limit. I've seen him uh, draw in Adobe Ideas, and he he had so many strokes in uh, on his illustration that this the last stroke that he wanted to do just made the application go all crazy because it was just too much. For, for the iPad to, to process. So he's really pushing the apps to, to the limit. So let's have a quick look at how these uh, drawing apps actually work and how, again, they integrate with Creative Sync and the Creative Cloud libraries and how, for example, uh, which one are you using now? The- um, we start with a sketch. With Adobe uh, Photoshop Sketch. So there you will see how the brush that we've created with the, um, uh, the mobile app on the phone actually gets back to the to the tablet device and uh, and is usable there yeah and um yeah and there are good chances that brian yap will actually host a masterclass next month so uh just uh, follow us on twitter and mm -hmm. follow all the adobe accounts because we really hope that brian will show you in real time mm -hmm. like uh, yeah how he draws and that's uh, ah, he will definitely he definitely will and there's that's st amazing. there's still people about uh, asking how how does the brush that you created end up in photoshop how does it end up in uh, photoshop yeah. sketch how for does sure. it end up in illustrator basically when you create the brush you have to 
it, it, it is remains a brush in the brush app, but then you can say, I want to save it for Illustrator, I want to save it for Photoshop, yeah. I want to save it for uh, Adobe Photoshop Sketch. Basically, uh, why three different brushes? Because Illustrator is a vector application, um, um, Photoshop Sketch is, an, is a tablet application, and Photoshop, of course, is a desktop application. So the brushes are, technologically speaking, slightly different. And this is why we have to save them in, in various ways, but it's super easy to do. Yeah, so basically the behavior, if you want to, to see it one more time, is that, uh, so this was a coffee, like a coffee, not beans, but you know, powder, like uh, spread on the table. And uh, you can really feel the texture. So this is a brush I've created for Photoshop, Photoshop sketch that we will uh, demonstrate now. Um, but if you want to save it for Photoshop, how Photoshop works is more that it will spread, uh, you know, what you have captured or it will create something like this, like just a fold. So that's a classic Photoshop brush. Uh, today, we don't have this behavior in Photoshop CC. You have to go through Photoshop Sketch to get this fluid behavior. And in Illustrator, it's really very different because it's vectorized. <laughs> so you lose the texture, you just get uh, a little bit like a shadow, but of course you can uh, use different colors so it's more to yeah to get a different texture mm -hmm. i would say um so there's an interesting question about the about the apps like shape and and, uh, and brush for example of course um uh, marius asked are, are these shapes and and things actually saved on the device or only in the cloud they're actually saved on both because yeah. Um, your device is not always online, but maybe you need to work with the brush. So um, uh, these these uh, elements, these graphic elements, are saved both in uh, uh, in the cloud, synced to the cloud and your desktop apps, and of course on your mobile device. So now let me uh, show you Photoshop Adobe Photoshop Sketch. Okay, mm -hmm. so on the iPad there is only Adobe Sketch because I guess it's too too long, <laughs> but the real name is Adobe Photoshop Sketch. I don't know if it's written somewhere. About when you sketch. open it, when you yeah. open it, so about, you, need, you yeah. would need to force quit out of it and yeah, restart okay. it. Whatever, you yes. get the name. There is the icon somewhere. Yeah, um, and you have projects, uh, okay, which are more like boards. Uh, the first time you will open it, you will see community sketches, um, because this app is connected to Behance. So Behance is a professional social network for creative pros and. Um, the leading one with, uh, I don't know how many members, but more than five millions for sure. Uh, that's for sure. And at any time you can start sketching something and ask for feedback and say, oh, please, uh, this is what I'm doing. This is called a work in progress. And can mm -hmm. you provide some feedback? So maybe we can try. Just um, very quickly, will there be an Android version of Photoshop Sketch soon? We are working yeah. on parity between iOS and uh, Android, of course. Uh, I don't have a release date yet, but this is definitely something we are working on. And uh, uh, another question is, um, what if you're using CS6? Well, if you're using CS6, all of these um, Creative Sync and Creative Cloud libraries will not work. This is really one of the benefits of being a Creative Cloud member, the ability to be able to sync all of these things uh, from your mobile devices to, uh, to your desktop and use the tools in these new creative ways. So this is something very distinct that is part of Creative Cloud only. Okay, so just to show how it works, uh, you can use your pen, okay, either your pen or a stylus. Uh, uh, this one is um, uh, the one from uh, the bamboo, so it's just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. what's yeah, the name? It's just like? a um, um, rubber. No? Like, yeah, it's a rubber tip. Yeah. Rubber tip, like it's, it's like It's like the mini me finger. Like. Yeah, mini me. <laughs> yeah. It's like a small finger, yeah. basically. Um, but I really like Sketch because you don't have to be so precise, you can really um, um, be very efficient. So. There are a lot of different pens or brushes. Yeah, and Chris is asking, you know, you, are you using a pen? Are you doing it with your fingers? It really depends on uh, on how you what what makes you feel better, like when you draw on your device. You know, some people need very a, a great deal of precision, so maybe you need a hard, pointy tip. Uh, sometimes you would use your fingers. Sometimes you would use a pen like Michael is using right now um, uh, that has a little uh, rubber tip. Yeah. And uh, uh, also. This is also a very interesting question by JC is can libraries be shared between two CC accounts? Yes, you can share yeah. Creative Cloud libraries with other people. And this makes it even more interesting because it means that you can put um, uh, colors, uh, visual identity, uh, images, 
um, uh, brushes, all of these things into a single uh, Creative Cloud library and share that library with your work group, with your, uh, with your friends, with your, whoever you're working with to actually um, have everybody access the same exact assets. This is one of the benefits of using Creative Cloud libraries is really that to be able to share the same elements. What are you sketching? An, so, yeah, an ampersand. Yeah, esperluette, ampersand. So a what? Esperluette, that's French. Say that again. Esperluette. Okay, beautiful. All right. Beautiful. Esperluette. And it means the same. Like, okay, uh, ampersand. Ampersand is and per se and. Uh, yes, okay. Esperluette est et per se Okay, et. yeah. And you know what this letter actually means? Yeah. It comes from the letter E, e and T, T, which means and in French. Latin. <laughs> <laughs> of course, French. Yes. Um, let's, not, let's not make him angry. Let's, it's, it's in French. So <laughs> the thing is that you start sketching at any time. You can go back in time and I will like it. So just using two fingers, you can swipe left and you'll move back in time. But if you put your three fingers on the screen, you have the full history and you can go back in time. It's a beautiful time mm. lapse, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's... You can produce very cool video with that. Yes. Actually, Brian Yap uses that technique to, uh, to show how he gets, no uh, to actually record how yeah, record. how he ah, did the drawing from smart. zero to to the end. So that's the first, the classic pen. Uh, well, I, I like this one. Um, and then when, when you feel confident with your shape, you can use a different one. Uh, you can also choose a different color. So again, you have the themes, okay, um, and you have the libraries. So if I go to my masterclass library. I get, of course, uh, the color theme we have captures like mm -hmm. 10 minutes ago with Adobe Color. And I can start drawing, you know, adding some shapes. Uh, you can play with the opacity. Uh, what is important is that we really want to create the, the same mm -hmm. experience you have on paper. So there, there is no concept of layers. It's just yeah. one sheet of paper, you can zoom in, um, but that's it, okay? So when, when it's, you draw something, that's for good. Yeah, and Stefan and uh, and Gem Design are asking if we're ever going to port these apps to uh, to um, to Windows uh, to Microsoft Windows um, um, uh, phones or even the um, um, Surface uh, Pro? Windows tablets like the Surface Pro. The ah. Surface Pro basically has the operating system on it, so you yeah. can install Creative Cloud on it. So you don't need <laughs> you, do, you don't need mobile apps to uh, to actually mm -hmm. do that because you can do it directly in Photoshop, directly in Illustrator, etc. So um, uh, I don't think there's any plans to actually port our mobile apps to uh, to the Surface because we have the real desktop apps there. And uh, so you you have a lot of stuff. You have also color blending. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but you can. You can blend, you can combine. So a lot of blending options also available in the app. So you can really express yourself very easily with different tools. But what I really like is that you, we can use the brushes that we have created with Adobe Brush. So let me show you something cool. I will just add a new blank uh, space and say, I want to use brushes here. So you have by default brushes defined in the app, such as acrylic. You have also a, a spray, for instance, if you want to quickly create a background, just this one, there we go, just very quickly. But then you can also go through your libraries and I will change your library to go to masterclass and the orange brush should be there. So here we go. So now I can select it. And uh, let me try to see how it behaves. Yes, uh, so what should we do with it? Um, I, I have no idea. So, okay. So do, that's weird. That's very, yeah. Yeah, that's, oh, that's so <laughs> organic. You see what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yum. And I don't have the space to, <laughs> to write yummy. How would you create a brush like that in Photoshop? Today? Yeah. Oh. You know, this is what people are asking for. Why can't I do a brush like this in Photoshop? Taking an image and, and making, uh, making it in Photoshop, right? That's a good question. So yes, that's a good question. And, uh, 
and, and we're listening. Yeah. Um, uh, Stefan, this is for you. Yeah. I understand your question and uh, we'll give the feedback to the Photoshop team. I yeah. think it's very important. Um, They're aware to, of it, don't worry. Yes, yeah, yeah. To, um, to actually port these, uh, these ways of creating uh, also to our desktop apps. So something also very disturbing you can use. Uh, I have a brush with my hand, I think, yeah. So this is my hand. You can see it now. Um, see, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's very disturbing too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but the thing is that when you are happy with uh, something, so I was working on this. So let's say really you are sketching something that makes more sense than uh, an orange or on my hand. Uh, then you can decide, okay, let, let's try to get some feedback from the community. Yes. That's an interesting aspect. So as I am working, I can say that I want to publish a work in progress. So it will take a, a screenshot, basically, of what I'm doing and share it on Behance with all the creatives on Behance. So I will publish a work in progress and I will call it uh, the portrait. Please, live feedback. Actually, if you go to Behance now and if you check my page in the work in progress section, you should be able to see it. And I will publish it now. So now there is the, the spinning wheel. So it's going to Behance. You should be able to see it in a second. Uh, your work is live, cool. Okay. Trying to find your page here. And I have this new uh, feedback icon here with the bubble. So every time I will have someone commenting, it will work. So what are you looking for? I'm looking for your work. Uh, slash mshes. Ah, okay. Directly on behance.net slash mshes. You received an email, by the way. Ah, I received an email. And Michael work in uploaded. progress here. Okay. Of course, you're not seeing that on your screens, but, but that's what, what you will be seeing in a second. <laughs> okay, I see Michael's portrait here. Let's open that for a second. Okay, so and I can continue I said, working. Yeah, and I said, keep on training that drawing. Whoops. Okay. And I posted a comment. On his Behance page. So I think I really love this work in ah, progress thing. Look. Okay, so from my desktop computer went to the cloud and back yeah. to uh, to Michael. Okay. That's nice. Yes. Keep yes. on training that drawing skill. Oh, okay. And <laughs> well, you can you can say it with your voice. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank yeah. You. yeah. You're welcome. Okay. And then of course you can uh, continue working on it and decide to publish a new work in progress. So again, you go here and publish a revision. It should be in the same work in progress project, but just it will add a revision. So yeah, I really like it. And then you can decide um, to, again, send it to either Photoshop or Illustrator. So let me send this one to Photoshop. Here we go. So now it's building a project. Actually, it's building a PSD file on my iPad, it says sent, and now you should be able to see my desktop with a lot of windows, but then you see Photoshop. That is automatically, magically launching, mm -hmm. and it will open my project. Here we go. You don't have to do anything. So how does it work? It's because I'm using my Adobe ID on the iPad and the same one with my Creative Cloud uh, desktop application on my desktop, so that's why it's automatically in sync. And what I like is that in Photoshop, I have uh, transparent background. So it's really something that the drawing I can reuse and uh, try uh, yeah, a different background and, uh, and see how it behaves, etc. So I really like it. Um, there is also something and that is not very well, this one is really not very famous. Um, let me open my it's eye here. It's a tip and trick. Yeah. It's a Be trick. <clears throat> because you can also tip. Send it to Illustrator CC. So I will say send to Illustrator. And again, you have the spinning wheel. It will build a file. 
And again, this is the real benefit. You start working on your mobile device yep. while you're on the go and you just send, you it. Just send it to the application. And even if, if, you're, if you're not yet in the office and when you get into the office and you open your computer, the apps, the Creative Cloud will open your applications automatically when you send these images to it. So this is now opened in Illustrator. Yeah. And it is... So for the moment, it's mm -hmm. a bitmap. Yes. So you say, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Maybe I could take a screenshot and just import it. Maybe it's easier. Yeah. Okay. But what you can do, because it comes from Sketch, and Sketch is using SVG in the in the background, uh, so it's the scalable vector graphics. Yeah, so a description in XML of what, of all the path. Uh, so you can go in Object, Line, and Sketch Art, and say Expand to Path, and it will work. There we go. And now I have an object with I have all my path, so I can. Take this, uh, you see here, I was drawing stupid stuff, I guess. Here, so he, he kept the path, uh, but I can duplicate it and I can transform it. There you go. Okay. Perfect, and there we you see that rotate. now we have exactly what we need, but in vectors. And yeah. we can continue working with that. And you can change, uh, these are paths, so you can change also the, you know, the, the brush stroke, mm -hmm. like the way you stroke. So you, you can really play with it. You mm -hmm. can change the colors um, because this, this is not bitmap now. Uh, so Photoshop Sketch is very cool for that. But there are some people I know that are very uh, keen on vectors mm -hmm. and we have another application for it. Uh, maybe you want to show it. Cheese Illustrator Draw. Illustrator Draw, okay. And there's one, one interesting question. What if oh. you have two computers with the Adobe apps installed? Which one will it send it to? Probably both. both. If, they're, if they're both open, it'll send it yeah. to both computers. So whichever computer is off, it will not be sent to. Um, so, uh, so if you prefer to have it on your, uh, on your iMac instead of a laptop, um, your laptop it shouldn't, have, you know, shouldn't be mm, you know, working right now. Um, so basically, if you if you open that, it'll go directly to to both of them. If uh, yeah, if they're both open. So this is another app, uh, Adobe Illustrator Draw, that really looks like Photoshop Sketch. I mean, mm -hmm. when you open it, you have the same experience with the projects. Um, you have also um, several pens, but at the end, you create vectors. Okay, so if I select this pen and and the color, I can go in the masterclass library to pick my orange and zoom in and then i can start drawing i can really zoom in and be super precise mm -hmm. everything is vectorized so uh, cool. can you show the layers here because suzanne is asking um and yeah you that's, know and that's that's one of the benefits of cool. uh, of uh, Adobe Illustrator Draw that you can draw with uh, with layers. So, for example, if you need to create a structure um, like a sketch of lines, just to have the structure of your drawing, you can do that on a layer, and then you create another layer and you start uh, painting on it. So, yeah. uh, yes, and it really works. And you can reorder the layer. So that's also something very cool. With a long tap, you can reorder the layer. So if I go to the top here, it goes to the top. So that, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. And um, some of you may like, so this is something I've done with uh, Illustrator Draw, for instance. And you see all the details, you keep everything. Yeah, that's very, very um, Can you try to do a, a three finger swipe on this? Uh, you don't have the three fingers on uh, Draw. Ah, that's it's right, yes. One, yes. Yeah, you can just go back once. But that's what's nice, and this is something that is also in Photoshop Sketch, is that you can tap here and have precise drawing tools. So for instance, you can have a ruler. So I should switch, I should go to the right layer here and pick a stronger color. Here we go. And you can draw a horizon line. Yeah, or a, or a diagonal. So by the way, this is Pierre Casanova. He's the country manager for our friends at Adobe. But you can also tap once and say, okay, now I want to draw a circle. You can also transform the shape so it becomes uh, an ellipse and be, be very precise. So I will change and go to this one. And again, I repeat, 
everything that Michael is doing right now on Adobe Illustrator Draw are vectors. So when, when you send this to Illustrator, you can continue working a little bit like what you showed before with the shape of the yep. word Paris opened in Illustrator, you can then continue working on it. Oh, by the way, we should try because you can also access the shapes here mm -hmm. directly from the tool. Yes. And if I want to add Paris, uh, okay. So I think I can double tap. Yes, That's you, the you trick. definitely can. Boom, there and it go. will stamp it. That's nice. Yes. I think your drawing is getting a little bit messy right now. Yeah, that's yep. a mess. Double tap. <laughs> parry, parry. Parry, okay. parry. Okay. <laughs> but then, yeah, at any time I can go back and... Also, I was working in one layer. Mm -hmm. So I can say I want to delete the layer. Or I can hide the layer. Yeah. And then I lose everything, so that, that's fine. Um, so yeah, that's Illustrator Draw. Um, Brian Yap is using this app. Yes. Again, it's free on, on the iPad, so you really should try it. And uh, yes, we're working also on the Android version. Mm -hmm. And I want to send it to, I can send it to Photoshop. So Photoshop, I think it will just take a, a screenshot in very high resolution. Yes, yes. That, that you can use for a print, for mm -hmm. instance. But if I send it to Illustrator, and again, there are a lot of details. It's not a small drawing. Here we go. It's now in Illustrator and I get everything. So maybe I can do common Y to show you all the vectors directly sent from um, Illustrator Draw and I keep all the colors. I mean, that's super cool. Yeah. Oh, can you zoom? Can you show the, um, the view? Okay, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. So basically all the shapes and, you know, some things remain lines, some things become shapes. Yeah, so it's really change the colors. So no, that's very, very nice. I'm answering questions here, like on the go. <laughs> okay. okay. Select the background. I hope do, do links work in here? Can links. I put links? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, I don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. And uh, also you keep all the layers because that's very important. Coming from Illustrator Draw, I get all the layers. So I can mm -hmm. continue working on it. That's really a very And somebody asked, you know, is the, is the Apple Pencil going to make a difference in all of this? And um, uh, I think so. I think so. You know, yeah. it's, good. It's, it's, quite, it's, quite, um, uh, it's quite an improvement of how, you know, the tools work together. And on the iPad Pro, of course, um, um, what I like about the idea of the iPad Pro is that it, it becomes closer to a sheet of A4. You know, one thing that I... Um, that always annoyed me with Where the iPad that? or with the, um, uh, pardon? I'm oh. just discovering okay. that oh. my son was using my okay. iPad. So he <laughs> yes. did some stuff. Okay. <laughs> and so, so basically, yeah, it becomes more like a sheet of paper because it's, it's much, much bigger. And one thing that I always, as a, as a teacher of graphic design, I always tell my students to take the biggest sheet of paper they can because if, they, if you start drawing on a small sheet of paper, your ideas remain small. And uh, so the bigger the sheet, the better it is, I think, for drawing and sketching and, and ideation. So there is a good question from uh, Boa, mm -hmm. which is the name uh, of a snail, of course. Yeah. Uh, so can you send the Illustrator CC file back to Illustrator Draw? No, you can't. So it's one way. Yes, well, you could. Yeah, but you have to... You have to go through the library. Oh, as a shape, but then you lose all the layers. Yes, yes, of course. But yeah. you can you can use simple elements from Illustrator into a Creative Cloud library, mm -hmm. and thanks to Creative Sync, use that Creative Cloud library item then inside of uh, inside of your mobile apps. So there is well, one more, app. one more, one more app that we wanted to talk about today. And basically, this is the app that ties everything together. And what well, the first time I saw this app that we're going to talk about now, um, which is called Adobe Comp, I said, okay, this is it. This is what uh, this is what makes everything uh, have even more sense uh, than it had before, because this is a layout app. Finally, a layout app on on the mobile device, and this layout app is a little bit like like InDesign that allows you to gather all of these things that we've done, the uh, the shapes, the uh, the drawings that we did in in uh, in Photoshop Sketch or Illustrator Draw, and take those and create a layout. And it gets even better because. As we'll see, we can access some of the Creative Cloud services that no other application on the iPad actually can. Yeah. So why don't you show us a little bit how, how that works? So you start with a blank page. So of course you can choose the dimension of the page at the beginning. Uh, so here I'm designing 
designing a page for, a, let's say, an application or a publication uh, that will target uh, the iPad in landscape mode. And on the left, you see this uh, small icon. This is to jump into the drawing mode. So drawing mode um, really um, try to reproduce what would be the experience with pen and paper when you want to create a wireframe, for instance. So if you go to the help menu, you will see all the drawing gestures. So if you draw something like this, it will become a component of your page. Uh, so let's say that I want to add an image at the top. So I would just draw a rectangle to define the border and add a cross very roughly. And then it becomes an image block. And we will see how to, to fill in this image. Uh, then I can add a title or maybe a rectangle. So just a simple rectangle here that I will fill with a special color. And uh, inside, I want to add a title. So just using a dot to add something. And here on the left, I want to add a paragraph. So basically, with Boom. very simple gestures right there on the screen, you can actually create shapes very, very quickly. And uh, that's the beginning of a layout. Now, yeah. you'll say that this is very a very basic layout. But very, very quickly, we can turn that basic layout into something rather complex uh, by, for example, choosing the correct font. Or let, let's try, let's, yeah, let's choose the correct font. The correct font. So I have my title here. So of course I can uh, rename it. So it's uh, type Rufus here. And uh, you have here a, a text menu where you can say I want to center my title. And um, what I don't like when uh, with the classic design apps on the iPad is that you usually have only four or five fonts available on the system, starting with Helvetica. Like all the apps, they all use Helvetica. Yes starting with Keynote, for instance. Um, and on iOS, there are not so many fonts. But the Adobe team, they made a really great job because now you can access the full catalog of TypeKit fonts um, that you can sync with your desktop too. So if I go here and say, I want to select a font, look at this list. These are all professional fonts, like premium fonts that are available. And uh, Lust Didone, for instance, is not on my iPad but I can ask Adobe Com to sync it with my iPad, but not only with my iPad, also with all my computers. So I will say sync from TypeKit and select. And now here we go. I have here um, the Didon font and I will pick a different color. Okay. And I can change it here. Same here for the text. Uh, we'll select uh, Sophia Pro. Maybe the regular version should be enough. And just in a few seconds, I have Sophia, Sophia Pro now available and I can change the size of the text. Again, this is just a wireframe, just to get an idea. And then I have image uh, blocks. Uh, so this one is not an image block. So again, this is just something I can arrange in real time. But this is an image block, so I can take an image from my iPad, from the files that are also available in my Creative Cloud accounts, and from my libraries. Um, oh, by the way, there is a new service that mm -hmm. we introduced. Yep. It's called Adobe Stock. We introduced Adobe Stock in, uh, in June of this year. Uh, it's the result of the acquisition of Photolia. So it's a stock photography a website with uh, more than 40 million of pictures. Available. 40 millions of pictures and the, another great thing about Adobe Stock and this idea that we have of enabling our Creative Cloud users to actually access these 40 million pictures, like Michael said, is also to create a vibrant marketplace that allows you as creative professionals or photographers to also um, uh, sell or put your uh, your work on the market uh, through uh, through this um, stock service. So if you have vector graphics or photographs, um, uh, you can actually um, uh, become a, a Photolia partner uh, or and upload your uh, your images onto onto Adobe Stock. Yeah, just checking if I'm still online here. It looks so. You should be because you're streaming from ah from uh, no, from, no, it's ah, from, from the. <laughs> it's a different Wi-Fi, so yeah. I'm just trying to grab something from my library. Benson um, asked if you can sync non-typekit fonts. No, um, uh, in Adobe Comp, no. uh, that's how it works. Uh, you can work with uh, system fonts, which you know are 
these, uh, what I don't know how many, but they're very few. Or you can uh, access uh, hundreds of, uh, of uh, Adobe Typekit fonts um, and use those yeah. as a Credit Cloud member. So we just resize it here. And uh, okay, I'll just remove this. Okay, Steve, Steve W says, thanks, this is amazing. I will change the way I work for sure. Well, you know, it's, it's gonna be a slow process, yeah. but these mobile devices are being more and more important in our, in our everyday life. So why not start the creative process on those mobile devices while we have them with us. You know, yeah. we don't always have, you know, a sheet of paper to draw on or, you know, that the, the ability to take a color from nature or a shape or a creative brush. And I think this will become part of us, part yeah. of us as creative professionals and enable us to do things to work like we've never done before. Exactly like the title of our yeah. session today. And it's one path, you know, it's not the uh only workflow that you, you will have to use. You will have to start all the time from a mobile device. But now it's part of the family of workflows mm -hmm. that are uh, available for all creatives. So that's quite fascinating. And of course, at the end, when you create a comp, you can send it to Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign. So Rufus, I know you like InDesign, so. Yes, because InDesign for me is the the hub of everything. That's where all the Illustrator documents, that's where all the Photoshop documents, that's where everything ends up in a layout that can then be published. Okay, so now it should launch InDesign. There we go. It's a beautiful splash screen from yeah. Rico Timian. And what is fascinating is that you will keep all the elements, the text is available, and the fonts are already there. Mm -hmm. You see? And there's an interesting question from I See Everything Perfectly. That's, an, that's a very <laughs> nice name you've chosen there. Um, uh, can you save a page via Save As so you can use the same basics? No, you can't do that. But what you can do is create the basic page and go out of that basic page. And then before you create a new document, just duplicate that document and find all of the elements that you've created uh, already. Um, uh, it, like, for example, the examples that uh, Michael is showing you right now, these are layouts that are finished or that we're working on and that they can be used. They can be uh, opened and you can have access to layers and everything, the fonts and start working with those. So it's not possible to save as, but it is possible to save something like almost like a template and then use that to create new documents. Yeah. So this one, another comp and I will send it to Photoshop. Yes. Uh, so you can choose really. I want to send it to Illustrator, mm -hmm. Photoshop, InDesign. I mean, okay. the tool you use. Mm -hmm. And Rachel G is asking, can you load color palettes? And yes, because when you choose the colors, you can of course access the colors from Adobe Cooler in Adobe Comp. Yeah. Exactly like all of the uh, other library um, uh, elements. So let's try here. Okay, I have, oh, you see the masterclass with my orange theme? Yes, the that's the orange created theme. at yeah. the beginning of this masterclass. I can switch to my library and, okay, pick this, mm -hmm. for instance. Or choose go. other themes and, uh, and, uh, and use those. So basically, what we've shown you in the past hour, and uh, I hope it was truly a masterclass because we really went into, into everything that we have available. And, uh, and uh, we, uh, we really did the whole circle from capturing things in our um, everyday life to actually creating uh, a drawing or a layout with um, Adobe Comp and then sending that layout to InDesign. But you can save the same, uh, you can send the same layout from Adobe Comp to Photoshop and Illustrator as well. So these, um, these apps we hope are really opening a whole bunch of new workflows and a whole bunch of new ways of, uh, of approaching the creative workflow that you can actually jumpstart right there on your mobile devices yeah. while you're on the go. That sounded very American, like you can jumpstart it. Jump start, yes, yeah. you can jumpstart your creative workflow. But the fact is, it is true because you have tools now that make sense. And as the, um, um, the teams that are working on these tools uh, like to say, they like to create tools that are powerful enough for professionals to use, but simple enough to use for people who are just starting. So this is the mantra for our mobile apps, to make them powerful enough for creative, uh, creative um, uh, professionals out there, but also easy enough for people who are just starting. 
Michael, do you have something you want to say before we uh, we say bye to our friends today? And um, no, so yeah, wow, that that hour for, just flew by. Yeah, thanks yeah. for watching. Yeah. And uh, this masterclass will be available on the same page on I do this afternoon. Okay, mm -hmm. and on YouTube on the Adobe Creative Cloud channel. Um, I guess next week. Um, also, uh, we invite you to download all the apps if you have uh, iOS or Android devices because they are all free. So you can really. Uh, sign in for free and uh, yeah just let us know you know um, how it works for you you can chat with us on twitter uh, the, or nicknames or mm -hmm. somewhere on the page yeah and um and there will be more master classes next month so make sure you follow uh, also uh, all the adobe accounts on twitter um just to be notified that there is there will be awesome master classes and we hope and to did you mention max max uh, who, who's my <laughs> so and adobe max will be in uh uh, 10 days yes it's that's scary, scary. yes uh, so not that's... not this monday but the other one we will live stream the keynote um mm -hmm. and both keynotes we have a yeah. keynote on the monday on and monday. a keynote on the tuesday so, so it will be in the evening like yes. 7 p.m paris time um but make sure you watch it because we will announce a bunch of new stuff especially mobile apps and new mobile workflows and uh we had a preview last week and we were just uh that, that's amazing what's going yeah so the, what we have shown today is just the appetizer it's, it's really just uh yeah it's just, just the, a just the surface yeah, yeah. just the surface the because tip the tip of yeah. the iceberg like one says oh that's really cool okay yeah <laughs> so should we end with uh someone creating in the desert like white sand ah uh, why not let's we can end with a video why not yeah and again uh thank you all thank you everyone that was very the cool. chat part was really um, stimulating and a, a lot of yeah. good questions came yeah. and um, and see you soon bye bye, bye. I'm here to observe as much as I can and create a piece of work with the creative cloud apps I come into a place like this and I'm very inspired by the landscape here. I really love the shadows on the sand. I'm very in tune with sound, I'm in tune with touch, I'm in tune with texture in the sand or how the sky moves with the clouds. All those senses bring an emotional response. These tools are great because they allow me to put the stuff I see into my work. The details, the texture, the sparkles of the sand, the gradation, the colors. All the inspiration I gather appears here in my library. It's very powerful to be here. I'm never going to create an office again.